Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. It's September 30th, 2019, and you are watching the Theo Trade evening video. There's three minutes left in today's trading session. The S&Ps, they're just off a gravity point at 1450. I'll come back to that here momentarily. You know, the theme tonight is these key stocks continue to kind of well have trouble even diverge a little bit lower and i'm saying that on a day where the s p's are up some 15. i gotta tell you there's some fairly astounding things going on inside of today's tape but some of that can be attributed simply because well it's the last day of the quarter remember it's it it's the end of the quarter and for those of you that kind of follow this there are portfolios that get what we term window dressed effectively what that means is if a stock performed extraordinarily well over a quarter you know something like apple what do they do well quite simply you buy it i'll come back to that here momentarily again on this theme of key stocks continue to diverge lower one of the reasons for that okay simply put it's the bonds all right so take a look at the uh, the action inside of the bonds on the day the bonds well, they rallied back and things are just downright. And I was mentioning this in the, the weekend video. It's just downright dangerous inside of the bonds right now. You know, I can look back and remember, you know, trading bonds over most my entire career. But I can't remember such okay, a vast amount of volatility, okay, yet sitting in such a binary position right now. And what that means is it's as ominous as it sounds. Um, these things are just going to explode higher or lower. And we're, we're sitting on a powder keg right now in the bond market. Uh, today, it's pretty evident. Again, the bonds early in trade today, they were down. And when those bonds are down, okay, it was lifting the financials, right? And throughout the course of the day, what happened? The bonds started to rally back and put pressure to the financials. You know, a few days ago, I was talking about, hey, are the financials overdone? Uh, you know, a little bit of an overcooked chicken. And look how much, again, look how much these financials have actually come in. Quite considerable. You know, when I talk about stocks that are really starting to diverge lower, though, allow me to start uh, this evening on Goldman Sachs, okay? Now, granted, Goldman Sachs does have earnings coming up. It's inside of the next two weeks, but uh, Goldman Sachs diverging a little bit lower. I would look for continuation of the downside over here. You know, you could pull up a, a fairly substantial chart. Goldman Sachs is still way, way off some of the more recent highs over here in uh, 275, again, in recent years. Nevertheless, for those of you that are market technicians, of course, you're going to call this the, uh, the double top, slipping a little bit lower, though, prior to the upcoming earnings. And I always think to myself, you know, when earnings are like two weeks away, they're already starting to sell the stock. Mm, what does somebody know, you know, over at Goldman Sachs? Because it is the uh, it's the big loser inside of the financials. There's the closing bell. The big loser inside of the financials today, none other than Goldman Sachs. Now, <clears throat> that's not the only sector, obviously, diverging a little bit lower. Uh, obviously, financials are feeling the pressure of the bonds. And I'll reiterate something here that I've been talking about extensively. OK, and that's this. If these bonds, if they do take off to the upside, OK, that will put. A, a real nail in the coffin for what's going on inside of the financials. Again, I define the financials as looking at the XLF. And if the XLF goes, the entire S&P 500 is going to go along with it. So make new two ways about this, okay? The bonds, which are this, again, incredible binary trade right now, and we're sitting on so much pent up volatility. Where the bonds go, the S&Ps are going to go. And again, this is going to be bonds. They start to rally again. Interest rates are going to go lower. It's going to suck down the financials right there with them. My own take on these financials, and I'm just going to give it to you here, this rally up in the financials, it's not so much just about interest rates. It was also about the fact that um, some of the European financials, which are at like 20-year lows, they had an incredible month in the month of September. Well, specifically like the last three weeks. And I was talking about that again about a month ago, how some of those European financials were getting hammered so much. When I talk about the European financials, listen, pull them up, pull up like, you know, Credit Suisse, which was, uh, you know, this doesn't look like much in the chart. You're talking about like 20 year lows. Yeah, start to pull up like maximum charts and you'll see what I mean. 
Okay. Obviously, they're coming off the bottom in a big way. And it looks like our financials got caught up in that as well. But you can see that some of the European financials are going to be fading. Okay. You can pull up, uh, again, in numerous uh, European financials, pull up UBS. Also, a stellar couple of weeks over there. Net, net, though, if you look at UBS on a much longer chart, looks just like Credit Suisse. Okay. We can pull up like Royal Bank of Scotland. That's just all kinds of hideous. That's a maximum chart. Nevertheless, also saw an incredible bid under it. So, I argue that it's the European financials that caused a little bit of a boost, if you will, to the uh, to some of the U.S. financials. And they're fading, though, right now. Again, a lot of that future move, though, is predicated on what the bond market does. Now, let's move away for a second from just the financials. Again, what the financials do, all right, is, is again, largely based on what the bonds are going to do. And those bonds, as I said, they're a powder keg. They're a 50-50 shot right now. Um, hey, listen, again, my own opinion, there's probably more upside in the bonds. Uh, however, if uh, this deal with China gets done, and that's, it's again, it's the unforeseen, you know, side of the marketplace, something that you can't necessarily predict, they may sell the bonds here in the, uh, in the near term. Anyway, moving on from there. Now, on this theme of stocks that are diverging lower, let me deviate for a second to one that, uh, well, needs to be brought up, and that's none other than Amazon. So Amazon had an up day, and you're like, well, why are you talking about Amazon? Because it's still, again, in kind of a diverging pattern to the downside. This is one that you better watch very, very carefully. You have to kind of ask yourself, is this just end of the quarter buy side activity, or it's going to be the first real bounce back inside of Amazon? Nevertheless, Amazon is in a uh, the death trade to the uh, to the downside right now. Increased volume over there. We'll keep an eye on it in days to come. Next on the uh, docket would be none other than Google. Google showing a little bit of weakness to the downside. And that's why I said this is one of those days. It's a little bit of a head scratcher, right? You've got some big market cap. You've got financials that are trading ever so slightly to the downside. You've got stuff like Google trading the downside. But yet the S&Ps are up some, what, some 1750. If you start looking at the advanced decline line, please, people, the advanced decline line is not at all stellar. But then, then you realize something like Apple. Okay. And this goes back to that idea, if you will, of window dressing. This is when they dress the portfolios at the end of the quarter. Whatever's performing well, buy it. Well, if you take a look at Apple, they bought it today. And it also goes to show you how much market cap matters right now. I mean, you bid one massive market cap like Apple, and it's enough to sustain the uh, a very large portion of the marketplace. All right, so we went through a little bit of like Google, which is diverging lower, Amazon, which is still absolutely in like trend down kind of mode. I also think it's apparent that you need to pull up energy. Now, there's something that I probably haven't discussed enough of lately, energy. Now, there's a lot of reasons, obviously, that energy is backing off, okay? But time out for a second. Since everything happened in the Middle East, energy isn't just backing off. It's substantially lower okay, than when all of those events occurred in the Middle East. And that is also extraordinarily notable. It's a big drag on the S&Ps. So to see the S&Ps up 17 today, and again, you've got some big market cap that's down, right? You've got the financials down. You've got Google down. Now you've got energy down. You've got stuff like Caterpillar, Goldman Sachs. This is big, you know, market cap all offset by the fact that you have one large market cap, which is Apple to the upside. Nevertheless, there's some important stocks that are diverging to the downside. Another one that I keep a very key eye on happens to me none other than Starbucks. Can't get out of its own way in the last couple of weeks of trade. Um, for a heads up, I am short uh, in the Starbucks position. Earnings are due out just about one month from now, but keep eyes on that as well. Listen, in just the coming days, all right, the market today is highly clouded because, again, it's the end of the quarter. A few points that I want to make. Number one, the S&P futures, they are literally sitting just shy of a gravity point. Here we are. Closing bell just happened. We're trading 29.80. We are $3 off a of gravity point. That gravity point right there is none other than 29.83. Again, 29.83. For those of you looking okay, for levels down below that, and I'm going to kind of zoom in. Obviously, again, where's the 2983? Below that, we're looking at 2911. There is a huge amount of room, of course, to the uh, to the downside in this marketplace. But okay, moving forward, do you see any downside risk per se in the market? Absolutely not. What we need to have happen in the days to come, and I'm telling you, this is a very pivotal week. Forget about okay, some of the China trade war news for a moment. 
the marketplace is very likely okay to be decisive before some of that china news comes out looking at the overall s p's though okay there are a number of very key risk metrics that continue to be bid even though they backed off a little bit today and i want to point out the vvix is still sitting in and around the 100 level granted we are a stone's throw off the all-time high in the s p 500 with a major risk metric okay sitting again right around the 100 level which is fairly extreme all of this we attribute to the fact okay of the indecision if you will inside of the bond markets in the days to come key into the bonds all right we're in a marketplace again stones throw off the all-time high the vvix is elevated okay the vix itself is still sitting around what the 16 level and you know the s p's they move 18 points today but the spx and again i want you guys to be aware always be aware if you will SPX, take a look throughout the course of the week at some of the volatility. The October 4th expiration is still portraying about a $37 move from this point forward. Granted, we've already kind of kicked off this week with some decent upside. The upper end of the expected move, 3,017. The lower end of the expected move, 2,907. Thanks everybody for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.